Okay, this video is going to go through the steps of working with a complex image, uh, mainly a photograph, and working with how to select images that will work well with the laser engraver or images that we need to do some editing with before we can take them to the laser engraver. So, I have Adobe Photoshop opened up. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to set my workspace of my document to be in inches and using the photograph size of a seven inch by five inch image. So my width is seven inches, my height is five inches at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I am going to create a document and then I'm going to start by placing my photograph into this document. So using the file menu, I shall go down to place embedded and then locate the image that I want to use for this design place this image into my document, and then I can use the binding box around my document to resize my document, making sure that I'm keeping it proportionate. And what I want to do is not drag this off where I lose my subject, which is the Titans hockey player. And I'm just going to position this so it's centered. I could position it so the top edge or the bottom edge matches up, but I'm just going to place this so it's centered for the purposes of this video. And then at the top, I'm going to select this check mark, which is going to accept my placement of the image. And now if I look at this image, I have a white background or light colored background and a darker subject, the players and the net. So for the most part, this design will likely not need much work at all. Uh, there is some further design work that could be done, but isn't necessary uh, in order to get good results. So what could be done? For example, is if I rasterize this layer, make a duplicate layer on top, what I could do is using my object selection tool from the fourth tool panel up at the top, is I could drag a selection box around the hockey player and the goalie to get as much of those objects selected as possible. And then what I could do with the hockey player here is on this layer, if I inverse the selection, what I could do is start using my eraser tool to delete the background. And I know it's not showing up and that's because my layer below is still visible. So the little eye icon here is on. If I click on it to turn it off, now you can see what I'm editing in my design. And right now I've only selected the hockey player. So I want to be careful not to delete the goalie or the net. And I'm just going to go around my player here, deleting everything out of the image that's not necessary for my design. I'm also going to leave the puck. So I'm just going to pay a little close attention to not removing anything around the puck right now. And I'll clean up around a skate. And what you can see, I'll zoom in on the skate here, is that it, it selected some of the skate, but not all of it. So I can remove the design around the base of the skate, but I'll go back again now. I'm going to use the select menu and deselect. And where I have my object select, I'll now take the magic wand tool. I'll start seeing if I can get the selection. Play with my tolerance setting here, make it a lower setting and see if I can just get the area around the skate. Let me try seven. That's getting it a little bit better. I'm gonna switch back to my eraser tool, make my eraser a little bit smaller and just start deleting some of this design around the skate carefully. And I'll go back up on my design, get that magic wand again, select this area inside the jersey. And if I wanted to, I could, again, just very finely clean this up um, with the eraser tool, just cleaning up the boards area. Or I could just take the eraser tool and very delicately trace around my player. If my magic wand or my object select tools aren't working particularly well. And then to get into the corner of the player's arm here, I just right click again. I'm going to shrink down my eraser tool so it fits a little bit better. 
And the nice thing with this is because it's a darker subject and I'm going to make the background be lighter. It's not super important that I get this perfect. What I'll do now is go back to my object select. I'm going to try and select the hockey puck. Didn't really work 100%. Let's try a different tool. We'll try the magic wand here. Select the puck itself. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to start adding to this selection. See if I can get this to work better. Maybe if I take my tolerance up to 15, that gets me a little bit more of the puck selected. So it's not a perfect system, but if you do play around, you will start to get good with using these tools. I'm going to go back to my eraser tool, inverse my selection. So I'm now selecting the ice around the puck. I'm going to make my eraser a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to delete everything around the puck. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a moment here. I'm just going to keep tracing up, get close to the goalie here. And I'm going to zoom in on the hockey stick here, make my eraser tool a little bit smaller, and just fine tune carefully around the stick. So that's separated out. And I'm just going to zoom out one more time here so I can see all of my design. I'm going to deselect everything, and now I'm going to try and use that object select tool to hopefully get the goalie and the net selected. So we got the net, so that works. We'll inverse our selection, make our eraser tool a little bit bigger here, and we'll start erasing all the details around the net. And the part of the problem with the net's going to be the fact that it's an open material, so it's not going to be perfect by any stretch. But what we're looking to do is just take the background area of this design and lighten it up a bit, just so that it helps to make the hockey player and the goalie stand out a bit more. So I'm going to just deselect this. I'm going to zoom in up on the top corner here. And I'm just going to fine tune my eraser tool here a bit deleting this out just very carefully by hand. And again, this is just using a combination of tools here to remove some of the design. And I'll show you what this is going to do in a moment here. So we're just going to clean up around goalie shoulder, we'll clean up this space a bit here by his helmet. And I can even fine tune this a bit by removing some of the designs from around the net. Trace the post a bit here. And can erase this section of the crease around the stick. And you can see here that the bottom of the stick, I've removed some of it. It's not really going to affect this too much. So we are going to bring the background and that part of that missing stick back again. We're just going to be lightening it up a bit so that it stands out a little bit more from the goalie and the player. So it's not immensely important that I'm 100% perfect with my removal of the design. I'm just going to trace around its glove. Go along the edge of the pad and delete this out. Now, if I happen to make a mistake, one really important tip that I have is to instead of just click and hold the mouse down and start trying to delete everything in one movement, would be to click and remove a section, let go of the mouse, click and remove a section. Because if you ever make a mistake, like say you sneeze or your hand gets a little jittery and, oh, I deleted something I didn't want. Just if you push your control and Z button, it'll undo that step. But if I had been removing all of this area that I'm already working with here, when I hit that command, all of that would also go back in. So by breaking this up into lots of little movements, actually try and get the magic wand here. It just allows me to remove this a little bit easier and not have to worry that if I make a mistake, I have to go all the way back to the start and redo the whole process over again.
So I'm going to zoom out here. So there's my goalie and my player and the puck. I'm going to bring my background layer back up so everything reappears. But now what I can do is click on my original, my background layer, and take the opacity down to about 90%. And it's just going to lighten it up and to really help it stand out. I'm going to just make a new layer just to show you what this will do. Just put this layer to the bottom of my layer list. And then I'm going to just go and make this into a background layer. So it's a white fill. And if I want, what I can do is start taking that opacity down so that the background just becomes a little bit lighter than the goalie and the player. So if I take this down to like 50%, you can really see the goalie and the player stand out. And that means that those are the areas that are really going to be focused with the engraving uh, on the material. So that they will be the really defined areas and the background will be barely engraved at all, if at all, in here. But it still has some of the detail of the boards and the ice and the lines. So now in Photoshop, what I can do is I can hit File, Save As. An important piece is in the format or the export type. I want to choose this to be a JPEG. Now, depending on the version of Photoshop you have, if you have what I have here, you're not going to have the option to save this as a JPEG. So if that's the case, you need to exit out of this. And what you're going to do is go to the file menu and you're going to instead go down to export and choose export as. And what you can do from here now is choose the format JPEG and you can export this picture. Okay, so what you want to do is choose a quality of great or the highest quality possible and then just keep everything else the same with that JPEG setting selected. So we'll hit export now. This will ask me to save it. I'm gonna just call this complex image one, save that as a JPEG. And then I'm just gonna switch over to Adobe Illustrator. I'll make a new document here. And I want to make this document match. So my width is going to be seven inches. My height is going to be five. Create my new document. And then once this document is created, I'm going to take that new image where I cleaned up the background a bit uh, and place it in here ready for engraving. So I'm going to go to the file menu, choose place, find that image that I've saved. So there's my complex image one, place that in here. I'm going to click in my top left corner. And my image may not fit because of the quality settings in Photoshop, which is fine. What I can do is choose the properties menu and I can actually close my proportion chain and set my width to seven to match my document. And if I use the left hand corner of my selection box around my document, if I hit X, put that to zero, I put that to zero, it's placing it back on my document for me. So there would be my design and you can see again the background that I had lightened up is showing through. The hockey player is a little bit darker, more defined. The goalie is a little bit darker, more defined. Those are going to be the areas that are going to stand out. But truthfully with this kind of an image, it's not going to be a problem for me to take it as it was originally and just take it to the engraver and start engraving my material. The hockey player and the goalie are going to stand out more from the background because it is a light background. So let's talk about what to do if you have a dark background or a more complex design. So I'm going to make a new image here. I'm going to flip my proportions. So instead of just changing the numbers, I can just choose my orientation, select portrait from landscape. So now it's flipped it so my height is seven, my width is five. I'm going to hit create and very similar steps. I'm going to go from the file menu down to place embedded and search for my new image. There it is, same idea. I'm gonna scale this to fit into my workspace. And I'm going to just resize this a little bit more. There we go. Okay, by the way, I'm just zooming in and out by holding the Alt key and rolling the wheel of my mouse up or down. And that's why it's working so quickly is because I can zoom in really, really quick to a focused spot or take my time rolling the wheel of the mouse slowly. Same step, I'm right clicking on my layer, choosing rasterize. I'm gonna duplicate it again, same as I did for the first one. And I simply do that this time because I wanna make sure that if I make a mistake, I can go back to the original and not have to do again too much work again. 
So I'm going to hide my bottom layer and work from this one labeled copy. And similar to the first time, I can get my object selection tool out. I'm going to drag a selection around my son here. It's going to select him and I'm going to start deleting out the background. So now I can take my eraser tool again. I'm going to inverse my selection from the select tool and I'm just going to increase the size of my eraser tool here. So I can start deleting out the background and I'm just paying close attention to where these dashed lines are. So I want to make sure that, for example, this part of the bag here at the bottom is around the selection. That's something I don't want to delete, but I do want to delete this grass around the bag in my son's hand. I want to delete the grass around his face and his front and all this open part on the bottom left. And then what I can do now is just get back to my tool panel, use the magic wand tool. I'm going to push control and D to deselect my image. And I'm just going to zoom in on this little space inside of his arm, delete that grass out, delete the grass here between the bag and his arm. And then I'm just going to shift down a bit and start getting rid of this grass if I can here. So I can switch between a couple of tools. So if I want, I can go back to my object select, see if this will just trace around my bag. It's tracing his pants. Let's try this one more time over on the edge here. Selecting the bag again. Let's try a different tool. Go back here. Let's try the quick select tool. So this time I'm just going to trace inside of the bag and my son's shorts. And then you can see it's got a pretty good tracing around the bag. Not perfect. Not perfect either around his shorts. So what we're going to do is probably go with the old fashioned method here of the magic wand tool. Problem is, is the grass. So let's take the tolerance up. See if I can get more selected. That's working pretty good. Let's take this up again. That's working really well. Let's get the eraser tool now. I don't need it quite that big, but I can start deleting this section. But I want to pay close attention to this section at the bottom where it doesn't trace the grass properly. Go back to the magic wand tool. Let's take the tolerance down here. Get the grass selected. Start deleting this out. And then again, I can fine tune this a bit. Clean that up. And again, you'll notice again, there's a little bit of an error. I deleted a little bit of my son's shorts. It's not a big deal because that's a very small section of the design. Same with all these little bits that I'm deleting that were left over from the magic wand tool. It's not immensely important that I'm perfect with this but you will get better results in some places if you do pay a little bit of attention and care to what you are removing versus what you are keeping. And if I wanna hide that, actually what I could do is just get my eyedrop tool, match the color here, switch back to my paintbrush. I'll shrink down the size of my paintbrush and I'm just gonna fill this in and blend it in really straightforward. Okay, so that should remove all of that section out. And now I have my subject with the background moved. And the reason I've done this is if I go back here, I'll toggle back on the original. The grass is just too similar to my subject here. So what will end up happening is when the laser is starting to engrave the picture, it's not going to be able to differentiate very well between the trees, the sky, the grass, and the subject. So we're going to end up with things blending together and you're going to lose the detail of the shorts, the bag, even the hair is going to blend in and you're not going to be able to see the picture as well. So by removing the background area and focusing only on the subject, this is going to be all of my detail that gets engraved and the checkerboard area around it is going to be nothing. So that takes my more detailed image that wouldn't work ordinarily to becoming something that could work. So at this point, I'm gonna follow the same steps. Okay, so in my version of Photoshop, I'm gonna use the export feature. If you have a newer version, it's gonna likely be in the save as feature, JPEG. I want the great quality export. Give this a name. 
So I'm going to call this complex image two. That'll save my image. I'm going to flip back over to Illustrator one more time, create a new document here. And just like last time, I'm going to switch my orientation. So now my width is five and my height is seven. There's my workspace. I'm going to go to the file menu, choose place and find my complex image two picture. Go to the top left corner and same idea. I'm going to resize this down. So my width is five. It will proportionally scale the height to seven because I have that proportionate chain selected. If it did have the line through it, that means it is not linked. And when I change these measurements, if I change five to six, it's not changing my height and it's gonna skew my image. And then both of these are ready for laser engraving. So my hockey player and goalie would get engraved. The background would either not show up because it's too faint or it will very finely and lightly show up. The player and the goalie and the puck will be the things that will stand out because of my editing. And for the picture here of my son at the golf course, he is what's going to be engraved and show up. And everything around him that's white is just going to be the material that I engrave onto. All right, so that's how to create a complex image using a photograph for laser engraving in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. It is now your time to do your design. Please try to stick to something photograph size, so five by seven like I did, and use an image of your choosing. All right, folks, pitter-patter.